Welcome to the Rock is George podcast. I'm your host, George Dion, and this is episode 86. Thank you for tuning into the podcast through our website, rockisgeorge.com, through our YouTube page, at Rock is George, through one of the many podcasting platforms that we stream on, or at the loudest.com on the planet, knac.com. My guest for this episode is Johnny Gioelli of the band Enemy Eyes. Actually, you may be more familiar with Johnny Gioelli from his other projects, Hardline and Axel Rudy Pell, and even the video game music act Crush 40. If you haven't heard of Johnny Gioelli, I definitely would start with Hardline's debut album, Double Eclipse. It's a hard rock classic. It features Neil Schoen from Journey, Dean Castronovo from Journey. I can't remember everybody that's in the band. Uh, Johnny's brother, I believe, is in the band as well. Uh, Hardline currently tours with different musicians. They had a fantastic album out maybe a year ago called Heart, Mind, and Soul. Certainly check out the back catalog on Hardline while you're at it. Also, at, he's been with Axel Rudy Pell, which is more of a heavy metal in the vein of Rainbow and Deep Purple. They had an album earlier this year called Lost 23. I don't know much about Crush 40, but uh, I get my questions about Crush 40 answered in this interview. Uh, Enemy Eyes, the latest project by Johnny Gioelli, is a little different for him. Uh, he goes a little heavier than he would, would normally in Axel Rudy Pell, and certainly much heavier than he would in Hardline. He's described this project as... Uh, European metal meets American metal. He's recruited some heavy metal musicians to help him out on this, including Marcos Rodriguez from Rage, Fabio Alessandrini, which I hope I pronounced right, from Annihilator, and of course, uh, his fellow hardline bandmate, Alessandro Del Vecchio. But instead of me giving away everything about this latest project, let's hear from the man himself. Here's Johnny Gioelli. Of Enemy Eyes. If I knew absolutely nothing about Enemy Eyes, how would you describe the band's music to me? Wow, good question. I would uh, describe it as heavy, modern, the touch of old school. I'd agree with that. And, you know, you're not normally known for this heavy style of music. I mean, sure, with Axel Rudy Pell, it could get kind of heavy, but hard lines more, a little brighter, a little more melodic. Uh, this project is like, heavy metal in the vein of Iron Maiden or even like I heard some shades of Halloween in there. Yeah, it, it is actually. And it, it's actually, it is pre hardline my roots. So, I mean, I came up listening to Sabbath and rainbow and Dio and scorpions. And so there's like a little touch of everything uh, in there. And, you know, prior to my, what we would call, I don't know, professional, career which started at 11 years old I was into theater so I did a lot of off Broadway and stuff like that I was a little I was a child actor and I was um, always wanting to combine some theatrical you know creativity into the music and so this this is an outlet to do exactly that and that's why like the first video history's hand you know silver faced me you know, characters and, you know, plots and stuff like that. And I want to take the show that way too. I just don't want to make this a, you know, four guys get up on stage, jam, sweat and say good night. I want it to be something more as the sort of, I uh, hate to say this, but this, the final puzzle piece to my career because I'm getting freaking old and tired. <laughs> so are you trying to tell a story here with Enemy Eyes? Is it song by song or is the whole album sort of, one big narrative. So one big narrative. Definitely not a not definitely not a concept album. Uh, each song has its own uh, sort of picture. So we, we I haven't really pieced together what the what the storyline will be live yet, but we're we're getting closer and closer. But I know it's going to be something extremely visual, extremely expensive, but. I've got to do it. You know, I want I want to do something more. Nothing against the other bands uh, or projects. I don't know what you call them these days. They're bands, I guess. And uh, but I'm a little I wouldn't say bored, but 
I just want to do something a little more, you know, to uh, um, and a little more creative than getting up on stage and singing Hot Cherie, which I love. Don't get me wrong. I love all the hardline songs. I love all the ARP songs. But this is just going to be a little outside of the box. And you brought along some heavy players to back you up. Uh, Marcos Rodriguez is from Rage yeah. Induction and yeah. Fabio Alessandrini, yeah. I think I pronounced yeah. that right, from Annihilator. Yeah, exactly. And uh, yeah, armed myself with some some heavy heavyweights that can, uh, you know, deliver the sound we're looking for. And even Alessandro on bass, no one really knows him as a bass player, but he's probably a better, in my opinion, bass player than keyboard player. And uh, it just all works. You know, he's like my right hand man. We do. I'm, obviously, he does a lot of stuff on Frontiers. And um, this was uh, something that that the owner of Frontiers, Serafino, envisioned, which I was like shocked. And he's like, Johnny, what do you think about that? You know, doing something really heavy and and different. And I'm like, yes, let's do that because I'm I'm all about you know. It's interesting, even if you take the lightest hardline song uh, that I've written, when it when it gets on stage, it turns into something much heavier by default. So why not start heavy and, and get it even heavier on stage? That was sort of the mentality, you know, with this. And we had a blast writing this album, too. Probably the most fun I've ever had, because really there's no rules whatsoever in the heavier music you know you can get as lyrically strange as you want and obviously as visually strange as you want and it all just works you know to that to that sort of uh peak of creativity that we're, we're all trying to, to find so was it important to you to write as a group rather than just putting this together on your own and then just picking up a uh, higher guns so yeah i mean it was a combination of everything uh but what i was 100% firm on is I had to be lyrically uh, creative. So I, I had to write lyrics and melody. So I was given blank canvases really of music and I would pick through and go, I like this feel. Oh man, that's it. That's, I love this. And then the rest was built from there sitting in the studio and just creating, which went fast, man. I mean, we, we built this record in the matter of weeks, not months, weeks. So that's the way it should be and thoroughly enjoyed it. Like I'm really into fitness and running and I've had this album in my ears like every day and I don't get tired of it. So I'm, I'm really excited about it. I hope it, I hope everyone gets it. You know what I mean? That's, that's the, I had to do this for myself and then, you know, you hope it translates to everybody and they can, they can dig it. So far the comments on the video are overwhelmingly great. Everyone loves it, how interesting it is and how heavy it is and different it is from anything I've done. So, so far, off to a good start. Let's talk a little bit about the songs. You've previewed three so far. You got the one video that I saw, but you got a couple lyric videos and stuff like there, like yeah. that out there. Uh, yeah. Let's talk about Here We Are. Uh, here We Are. So that is a very simple concept of uh, basically... <laughs> all the terror and heartache that we've been through and those who have sustained, here we are. Um, I've done probably three, four, maybe five rescheduling of tours due to the whole pandemic situation. And those that have come out on the other side, this is a, a song in tribute to getting back on the stage uh, and here we are um you know we did it you know so that's that's what that song is about simple lyrics but uh powerful message speaking of a powerful message you have history's hand which is more about if we don't learn from history we're doomed to repeat it yeah that's exactly the, the message there it's uh simple you know i when writing that song i thought about the time I've spent in the studio and it translated to like this instant history. Every second that goes by becomes our history and we're responsible for it. You know, the whole storyline there was that we've created this doom, which we have to a certain extent. And this young kid is scavenging uh, across this barren land 
to find pieces of our of our history that are not necessarily so great and and what he sees when he's looking uh into his little telescope thing is uh overwhelming to him so and i i i, I snap in between normal johnny and silver faced machine johnny just to kind of give that imagery of the future and and present and yeah it's just kind of a cool thing and it's I, I'm I'm Italian descent, and uh, you know these days we don't hit anybody, not supposed to, but sometimes history and what we've created just deserves a good slap, and that's what this this song is about. You know, feel the hit of history's hand. Uh, so uh, yeah, love the song. I wasn't quite convinced it should should have been a first single. I think there's even better songs on the album, but from a creativity and, and sort of, um, you know, weirdness, uh, I think it works pretty well. Uh, Peace and Glory is about uh, kind of the rigors of war. And if you want to expand a little more on that. Yeah, sure. So, you know, I've got a, a lot of uh, friends that, you know, served in the military and um, one in particular, a good buddy of mine in his upper 70s that served Vietnam and, you know, this he inspired this song uh, because even, you know, pushing 80 years old, this man still cries about this war and feels forgotten. Quite honestly, it's um, can be a very, unfortunately, a normal occurrence here in America, how our military is forgotten. And so I wrote that in tribute to to him and, uh, you know, everything he feels like. Um, even though he didn't take on any shrapnel, he certainly felt like he did when he returned and people spit on him, uh, making him responsible for that war. And he's he's not alone. So that song was inspired by by him. And I hope that people can reach into those lyrics and pull some some understanding out of it. So that's uh, peace and the glory. A lot of these guys went and fought. Uh, not even understanding what they were fighting for. They're just um, drafted or, you know, went in on their own and not truly understanding what everything was about and coming back feeling empty and lost. And the new album by Enemy Eyes, History's Hand, comes out November 18th on Frontiers Music. It's your 100th release yeah. in your career. That's quite the uh, milestone. Yeah. Man, it's incredible. Really and I had to double check myself. So I had to go through my own discography and like one, two, three, four, five. And yeah, one, 100 albums. This And uh, you know, I was going to call it quits after 100. I thought 100 was a good milestone to hit and then call it quits. But, you know, I can't. I, I can't stop. Um, as long as the, the people tell me to continue, then I'm going to keep going. You know, until they say, Johnny, you can't sing anymore. You're done. And then I will accept that and I will go fishing. So uh, <laughs> that's it. Preferably on a salmon river. Well, at the very least, you got to try to catch Alessandro Del Vecchio because he's got you beat by another hundred albums, I think. At least. I think I think we well, we spoke about it. I think he was around 300 that he participated in in some manner. It's like, oh, my God, man. Yeah. I mean, I'm so grateful. It's It's really, it's mind blowing to me that the 100 albums are all different sounding albums, yet they all, the fans all, you know, cross pollinate and, and they, they love everything, which is so amazing. I mean, Crush 40 is gaming music. It's some of the most epic and biggest gaming music ever in history. And those fans who are so incredible, they'll buy and listen to Axel Rudy Pell, which is completely polar opposite. So I'm so blessed, man. It's It's been, an, I mean, I've been doing this literally since I'm 11 years old uh, professionally. That means professionally is making money doing it. I'm still amazed. I wake up and go, no, can't be. Really? Like I can live playing music? This is incredible. So yeah, so maybe uh, one or two more albums. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> Now, you mentioned earlier that you're going to be taking this project on the road. Do you have a projected time frame when this might be? Since this album is, is coming out, you know, November 18th, it's a little difficult to do what we want to do by this summer. We see this as a large stage 
uh, festival style uh, show. And unfortunately, uh, a lot of the big shows or those stages are already taken because again, we're still pushing, still trying to play catch up. So I don't anticipate anything big in nature until tw uh, 24. So although we may do some things in 23, I think our objective is to just grow, grow the band, you know, sort of organically and and build the fan base and and really push the music and see see how we land. Probably nothing until 24. Currently, you're touring with Hardline and Axel Rudy Pell, and I saw that uh, you were kind of crisscrossing dates there. It's got to be a little challenging to remember which show you're showing up. Oh, look, it's the band from Hardline. Bro, it's it was crazy. So I started, I just got home. I'm still exhausted. You could see it in the eyes. I started in Bulgaria doing solo shows and guest appearances and late night television to directly to Axel Rudy Pell, directly to Hardline and <laughs> songs. And, you know, people go, Johnny, you use a teleprompter. Yeah, I use a damn teleprompter. <laughs> Just seven, eight hundred songs in my brain. Absolutely. So, uh, yeah, it was it was it was really interesting to do. And uh, honestly, it was uh, invigorating. I, I loved going from one project to the next and like, OK, switch hats for me it was it was easy to do and just kind of refueled my energy for the next okay now we're doing hardline spain now we're doing slovakia now okay let's go and we just went i can't tell you the number of airplanes trains cars sprinters tour buses i've been on in the past two months i don't even want to think about it i get exhausted but again grateful to be on the stage, packed houses, which was shocking to me. Um, I didn't know what to expect. So things are um, definitely going back to normal, more normal. And that's a good thing, man, to see people out enjoying and escaping from the stress, uh, you know, outside of the, the concert walls was really great. People singing and enjoying and it was awesome. And typically, uh, both bands play overseas because the U.S. is kind of difficult. It doesn't, uh, in in a degree, it doesn't really, the, the powers that be don't accept the kind of genres as much as they used to in the past. Plus, your bands are mainly located overseas and getting work visas and everything just isn't cost effective, right? All of that. That's, that's correct. I mean, I, you know, could Hardline tour America? Absolutely. It started out as an American band. Um, it's just my fear, probably just my fear when you're successful in an area, uh, you don't, you, you don't really want to take a, take a, uh, a chance somewhere else. It's like, why let's, you know, we don't have to fix this. It's, there's no, there's nothing broken here. We do really well. That's our audience. And like you said, unfortunately, it's not everyone, but our genre of music just doesn't lend itself to the popular masses here, uh, in America. Could I, play small clubs and you know work my ass off all around the u.s yes is that my plan not really man did that done that i'm sorry for the fans that are here that would would love to to see that but it's really not in my plan book um i i uh nothing against the fans i love them and they would come out to a small club but i don't want to sort of go you know backwards with venues you know um just not in my plan book. So, and yeah, uh, also to your point, work visas, oh God, they make it a nightmare, really a nightmare to to get my guys here, you know, legally the right way. It, nearly uh, a year, a year and a half just to get an approval. So, I mean, how can we plan something? So all those things and and my thought of like, can I put 20 people in Starbucks all that fear and, and then all the complications lends itself to I'll just stay in Europe where where I know it works for the time being. Uh, you mentioned Crush 40 earlier. I'm not super knowledgeable about Crush 40. Uh, it, video game music, you said. I know it has something to do with Sonic the Hedgehog. Uh, if you want to go a little more into Crush 40. Yeah, I get that. You don't look at the gamer type, bro. But I would say <laughs> it'll fit the profile. But 
Crush 40 started actually in 1998 when I started Axel. So 20 going on 25 years. Uh, Crush 40 is a, a, a partner of mine in Japan, Jun Sonoi, who actually works for Sega company. He's an employee of Sega. I'm a freelance guy. We got together in 98 and we started creating gaming music. It was my idea, my brainchild to create a band around the game, sort of like a soundtrack for a movie. And I said to him, I said, June, we should be a band. I was in my 30s. I said, I don't want to turn 40 years old. I want to crush 40. He goes, I love the name. Let's go. So we built and created some of the most iconic and epic gaming music ever. Um, 300, 400 million in gaming sales, uh, hundreds upon hundreds of millions of views with songs such as Live and Learn, um, I Am, What I'm Made Of, uh, Open Your Heart. These are all some of the biggest songs I've ever had in my career stem from gaming music, which is so popular um it uh you know fans buy the games because they love the music or they buy the games because they love the game and then eventually love the music so it just works hand in hand it's been absolutely amazing and i will say that by far it's the largest fan base i have worldwide like i can go on fiverr and 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 talk to someone in sri lanka who knows Crush 40 and is a huge fan of the music. It doesn't matter where I go, where I play. If I'm in Russia, if I'm in Japan, if I'm in, you know, Nebraska, there's Crush 40 fans there in that audience. It's mind blowing. It's absolutely mind blowing. That's the only music my son listens to, video game music. It's more modern video game music. I don't get it. I can't get him into contemporary stuff. It's insane. Wow. And it's getting heavier and heavier. You, you wouldn't believe some of these heavy bands like Enemy Eyes is really becoming the the fit for for the new for the new games. And it's just all this driving, sort of like almost like workout music. You know, it just gets these kids going in these games. You know, and I'm you know I'm not into the 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 you know the shoot 'em up you know types of games, but the Sonic games are are an old school sort of platform and old school concept that is still a beat em up type of game and collect this and collect that to win and uh and the fans are just they have amazing memories uh i have i have i have adults running up to me saying you were my childhood you were my child when i was in a dark place man i turned on a sonic game and i heard your music and so i mean all that stuff is just incredible uh to me yeah, Crush 40 is absolutely the biggest band that I have done to date. It's incredible. Were you approached at all to do the Sonic the Hedgehog movies? It's looking like it's going to happen for Sonic 3 movie. There's been chatter. Uh, we had what they call an Easter egg in the first movie. So it said Crush 40 up on the screen. The producers I've been in touch with. They know that we are synonymous with one of the most famous games, which was Adventure 2, which my big song, Live and Learn, is on. Live and Learn is probably the biggest gaming song ever. They know that this Sonic 3 movie, which takes an adventure plot, they know that Crush 40 has to be there. So we'll see what happens. That's that's also a 2024 movie, if I'm not mistaken. And I'm pretty sure we'll get a call on that. When Hardline gets off the road, you guys gonna work on the next album? Yeah, so we have uh we have we're finishing up Heart, Mind and Soul tour. We we have another show, our last show, November 4th, coming up uh in uh Portugal, which is gonna sell out, which is mind blowing. And I'm so excited about that. Thousands of people that's singing. You can't get over this audience. The, the Portugal audio, Portuguese people, man, they love their rock and roll. You can't believe what it sounds like in that audience. So I'm excited. What a way to finish up. And then in January, we will start uh, our writing procedure for um, what is actually the last album on Frontiers for Hardline. And we'll have to decide if we're going to continue to 
make hard nine albums or what's going to happen. You know, there's been all kinds of talk and I'm heading out to California next week. I'm going to be with Dean Castronovo working on some revolution saints uh, stuff with him. I, I produced his, his uh, recording of his vocals and for a bunch of albums. And, you know, we're always talking about a hardline reunion and what that would look like if we do another album or if we do some touring together and, you know, so there's, there's a lot of possibilities and uh, we're going to keep hardline sort of like open to a whatever scenario. Let's just kind of see what happens. My first priority is finishing out the year strong and then I'll worry about next year soon. Are we going to hear your voice in any other projects coming up soon? Oh God, I hope not, man. I'm exhausted. <laughs> I, I told my family, I said, I'm going to come home. I'm going to sit in my chair for two days without moving. And unless you're on fire, please don't, don't even talk to me. Just give me two days to recover. You know, I, I say that man. And then once I get home, I'm like, okay, I, I had one good night's sleep. I'm ready. Other projects. I'm always working with um, musicians around the world. I love this. There was a time back in the 80s and even the early 90s that if you were involved in more than one band, you were like a band hopper. Today, I think that's and I think that's ridiculous. I'm so into working with artists all around the world. I find it just so such a, a great creative outlet for myself. So any project that comes to me that I feel like I can add value to vocally um i do it so i turn down a lot of work because i you know i don't fit the profile of, that someone thinks but yeah i've got some co some cool side stuff coming up those are all the questions i have for you today johnny the Thank new you, album the new album is history's hand the name of the band is enemy eyes it comes out november 18th on frontiers music sounds fantastic i hope that it uh, gets a warm reception thank you brother so far so good man it's on it's on the stove and we just got to boil it up once again, I want to thank Johnny Gioelli of Enemy Eyes and Axel Rudy Pell and Hardline and Crush 40 for coming on the Rockish George podcast. Be sure to check out the new album by Enemy Eyes called History's Hand. It releases on November 18th through Frontiers Music. Head over to your favorite music streaming app. Check out the new album. If you like what you hear, make sure you buy a physical copy. Support the artist. For all things Enemy Eyes, head over to facebook.com slash Enemy Eyes. For everything on Johnny Gioelli, head over to facebook.com slash Johnny Gioelli Official. You'll have to look up the spelling on your own. I also want to thank John Freeman of Freeman Promotions and Frontiers Music for making this interview possible. You've been great. I've been George Dion. I hope I didn't butcher Johnny's last name too much. I'll see you again soon.